So, uh, we have just finished with the uh, terrestrial systems, uh, the ones we need to close uh, the connection towards the um, ink color, red, celestial systems. And here is the relationship. As I mentioned to you, it's just an overview. Okay. Um, if you use now by using the uh, IRS convention notations, and um, if we want to go from the uh, conventional celestial system, uh, and uh, this one here is used for the uh, computation. Uh, uh, what is okay? Computation of satellite orbits and uh, we want to have the same satellite orbits expressed in the conventional terrestrial system okay so uh, here we have um, that's what we we want them to be in the city system um, so uh, we have applied the precession matrix, notation matrix, the earth notation matrix, and the wall matrix. Okay, uh, yeah, I should say that uh, uh, these are the orbits actually vector. Here, just uh, uh, if you're relating uh, directions, so uh, this expression here is more uh, for uh, astronomical positioning. This one here is what uh, we'll be using in satellite positioning. Okay, now uh, we uh, have done all that. We talked about the LA system, CT, IT, AP, the uh, mean right ascension systems, uh, and uh, we have made the connection through here, so through the system of apparent places. Let's now talk about the orbital system, and that's going to be. Uh, not a big uh, topic. Uh, what the importance of the orbital system is basically that uh, it's the best suited for representing the orbit. Okay, so uh, we are going to see that uh, we may represent the orbits in Cartesian coordinates or may use the so called Keplerian elements and uh, uh so uh, we have the computational orbits in here we have the use of orbits in here uh, but the representation the best representation is here so that's the importance of the orbital system so uh, this is Kepler's laws uh, you have seen these in uh, uh, geodesy one um, I don't think I need to, uh, to read this slide, uh, but just in case you want to play with that, I found an interesting animation uh, about Kepler uh, laws uh, in this uh, link, if you want to have a look. So here's the figure of Kepler, um, and uh, it's uh, important, of course, because he made all this law of planetary motion. Orbital system. Um, so the orbital system uh, is defined in such a way that the origin uh, is at the center of mass. So here's the origin. Uh, uh, get out. Okay. Here's the origin of the uh, orbital system. Center of mass is the same as the uh, conventional terrestrial, international terrestrial system of parent place. Uh, it is, a s uh, nevertheless, is a system that is two-dimensional because we are going just to consider two axes, uh, the uh, direction of the third axis uh, is actually, uh, well, the elements would be zero because the whole system uh, is used to represent the orbits on a plane. Okay, the orbits are orbiting an ellipse. So the um, x 
or the primary orb, uh, axis of the orbital system points towards the perigee the perigee is the point of closest approach uh, of a satellite with respect to the center of mass and the y-axis is defined uh, in such a way that these would be essentially a uh, uh, well, that's be a, a right-handed system um, so um, the uh, farthest away point is known as the apogee apogee and the uh, the line that connects apogee and perigee is known uh, it probably it's double p here but anyway uh, is line of the upsides now if we have the satellite orbiting uh, around these segment of ellipse in here okay uh, and here is a supposition of the satellite s we can represent it by means of the components in the uh, orbital system or we can use uh, solve in such a way that x y z z will always be equals to zero uh, x and y will be numerical values uh, different from zero uh, or we can use the so-called Kepler elements okay there are six Kepler elements uh, the two first ones define the size and shape of the orbital ellipse the major semi-axis and the eccentricity okay uh, then we have other elements that will define the position of the uh, orbital ellipse with respect to the uh, system of parent places and the last one is going to tell us about where the satellite is so let's look at the eccentric anomaly because it is shown in here the eccentric anomaly would be the angle that is counted between the direction towards the perigee, the x-axis, and the direction to the satellite. Uh, if the uh, we are taking the center of the ellipse, okay. So this point here is the center of the ellipse, and the, the point is that uh, we are actually having a uh, projection of the satellite onto a sphere okay a, a sphere that uh, connects the, that osculates the uh, orbital ellipse at the perigee uh, so uh, this is it this is the eccentric anomaly and of course the eccentric anomaly is going to change as the satellite moves uh, now there are actually three anomalies there is another anomaly that uh, I'm using the letter F some people use different symbols. I'm calling it the true anomaly. And the true anomaly, there is a delay there. Uh, the true anomaly is uh, similar to eccentric anomaly in the sense that it's also an angle counted from the um, x axis, but it is centered at the origin or the, at the center of mass and it connects the actual position of the uh, satellite directly okay so uh, the eccentric anomaly or the true anomaly and there is another one the mean anomaly uh, which represents the satellite uh, moving with constant speed uh, is um, they all change with time uh, in a purely Keplerian uh, orbit all these five elements they are constant okay this is something that we have to bear in mind in reality in real life they are not but in a purely Keplerian element uh, orbit they are um, so what causes these uh, Keplerian orbits Keplerian elements to change uh, we call them the disturbing accelerations 
uh, which are caused by irregularities in the gravity field of the Earth, uh, gravity of Moon, Sun, friction against the atmosphere, solar winds, etc. There are several different elements. Uh, so, uh, in reality, what happens is that we use Kepler elements, uh, but all of them will be varying with time. And uh, for ev every given instant, we're going to have uh, what we call the oscillating Kepler elements. So, uh, now this uh, uh, situation showing the other three. Kepler elements, the ones that define the uh, position of the orbital plane, uh, which is here. This is the orbital plane. Why is this thing so slow? I don't understand. And um, well, uh, there we go. With respect to the system of apparent places. Okay, so here's the vernal equinox. Okay. And uh, so uh, here is the inclination of uh, the orbital plane with respect to the equator. Uh, here is capital omega, which is the uh, right ascension of the ascending node. This point here is the ascending node if the satellite is going up. Uh, and this is the intersection of the orbital plane with the equator ascending node. That is the descending node at the other side. And here is the argument of the perigee, which is an angle counted uh, on top of the uh, orbital ellipse. So this is just a, a different view of these elements. Uh, this is the orbit. Okay, uh, here. This is the uh, equator uh, of the instantaneous terrestrial system. Of the sorry, the apparent places. This is gamma. And uh, here we have the right ascension of the ascending node, the uh, argument of perigee, the inclination, and here we have the true anomaly at that particular position. Uh, how we relate the orbital elements with the Kepler elements? Uh, it's, uh, these are the expressions. It's a, it's a single shot solution. The inverse transformation is more involving. I actually have just added a link here uh, that we can find uh, in our in the GGE uh, depository repository. Uh, if you go to pages 113, 114 of this publication, you find that. And there is also a relationship between the eccentric anomaly uh, that they are done through this uh, very known expression called the Kepler's equation. Uh, so uh, this is a relationship between orbital uh, uh, and the uh, system of apparent places. Uh, the um, coordinates that we computed in here, in the orbital plane, uh, orbital coordinate system, they can be transformed to the system of apparent places by means of three rotations. And these three rotations taking place, the arguments are the uh, are three of the six Keplerian elements. Uh, observations. The orbits of GPS satellites are broadcast in Keplerian like elements. They're not truly Kepler elements, they look like. And uh, the guide to GPS positioning, available here, they uh, explain how the uh, transformation is made. Uh, if you want to go, what, what basically what the receiver does uh, when he uh, receives the broadcast message with the Keplerian elements and then transform them into conventional terrestrial system. The IGS, International GP GNSS Service, provide the Orbit's products uh, in one of the ITRFs. Uh, but they, you see the important thing that the Orbit's are given directly in the terrestrial terrestrial system. Okay, so we don't need to make any conversion, any computation. Okay, so yeah, I think that's uh, I'm going to stop right here if I can find it. Okay, disconnect.